my dear friends, welcome to Russian with Passion. So, we study Russian with passion. And if you do something with passion, well, you can't help but succeed. So, today we're going to talk about grammar a little bit. So, we have already studied two declensions. So, nouns in Russian have three declensions. First, second and third. They can be. So, one noun can be just one declension. It's, it's a categories of nouns. And according to these declensions, nouns change their endings differently. Well, nouns change their forms according to cases. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, instrumental and prepositional. And when we need to know when we want to put a noun into a sentence and we know what case we should use, but we do not know what ending to use, our job is to define what declension we deal with and then we can see what ending we should put. So we have talked about the first and the second declension already. And if you do not remember anything about it, I strongly recommend to watch these two classes. One of them is devoted to the first declension and another is devoted to the second one. So, however, if you already know a little bit about the first and the second declension, then, when, then we can get to the third one. So, third declension nouns are feminine nouns ending in zero. I mean, having zero endings, when there are no endings in the nominative case. Mostly these nouns end in the soft sign, but, well, it is considered that they have zero endings. So, for example, мать, mother, дочь, daughter, площадь, square, and some others. Here, what we need to memorize is that in genitive, dative and prepositional cases, these nouns have the ending e. For example, we say у матери, у площади, у дочери. Here, however, we should focus on мать and дочь separately, because we also add a suffix in these nouns, but the ending is e in genitive, dative and prepositional. For example, you say у площади, so и. У is a preposition which demands genitive case. Then you can say к площади. К is a preposition which demands dative case. And о площади, about. This case demands prepositional case. So, once again, у площади, near the square, к площади, to the square, and о площади, about the square. Now, let's take a look at the declension itself closely. For example, let's decline the word площадь. Nominative case, площадь. Genitive case, площади. Dative case – площади, accusative case – площадь, instrumental case – площадью, prepositional case – о площади. Notice, genitive, dative and prepositional – the ending e. And instrumental case – we have the ending u. And we use a soft sign too here. And accusative and nominative – zero endings. Here. Now let's decline мать. It's specific. Мать, матери, матери, мать, матерью, о матери. And uh, the declension of the word дочь is very close. Дочь, дочери, дочери, дочь, дочерью, дочери, дочери. <laughs> The last one is дочери. Okay, now I want you to decline two more words. The word лень, which 
denotes laziness and the word noch, night. So decline these words yourself and then we'll check. Okay, and now let's decline these nouns. Lin, laziness. Lin, leni, leni, lin, lenyu, leni. And the second word, noch, night. Noch, nochi, nochi, noch, nochu, nochi. I hope that you have done everything correctly. Here I would also like to mention the word put. It is masculine and it is very specific. It can be partially associated with the third declension because it is very close. However, there are some differences. So generally, masculine nouns ending in nothing, I mean having zero endings, change their forms as the second declension. They belong to the second declension, but the word put is different, it's specific. It is close to the third declension, even though it is masculine with a zero ending, but a little bit different. Let's take a look at it. So in genitive, dative and prepositional, we also have the ending e as in the third declension, but with the instrumental case, we should say Yom, putyom. So let's take a look. Put, puti, puti, put, putyom, puti. So remember this one. And here, let's also talk about neutral nouns ending in mia. For example, vremia, time and uh, imia, name, they are declined also quite specifically. In this case, we are supposed to use the endings which are close to the third declension once again, but we should also add some additional letters. Let's take a closer look. So we say nominative imia, genitive imini, dative imini, accusative Ime, instrumental, iminium, and prepositional, imini. So these are the neutral nouns ending in mia. Now I want you to decline the word vremia yourself. So let's do it. Now let's check. Vremia, vremini, vremini, vremia. Vreminim, vremini. Okay, and as usual, right now we are not focusing on plural forms. We are just focusing on singular forms. As for plural forms, we'll get to that later. Uh, we will also have classes devoted to this particular topic, but it will be another class. Okay, because I don't want you to get drowned in all the information and all the Russian grammar. So I have already mentioned, well, the singular and plural and how usually the forms change. You can take a look at this class over here, which is closely connected with this topic, which is devoted to this topic and it might get a little clearer. However, today our class was devoted to the third declension, singular nouns. I hope that now you got a better understanding of what forms you are supposed to use, what endings you are supposed to use here, and you will have no problems. At the end of our class, as usual, we'll have a quick practice. Your job will be to put the nouns in the correct case using correct endings. But that's it for today. I hope that you found this class useful and you liked it. If you did, please press the button, like and share this video in different places. Support my project, please. I would really appreciate that. Also, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is here. Or, yeah, yeah, it should be here. Or here? No, here. So, anyway, that's it. Happy Russian and English practice. Love you guys. Bye. 
So here are the sentences and in the brackets you can see the words, the nouns, which you should put in the correct form. I mean they are all singular, but you should choose the correct case. Now if you can't do that and it is too difficult for you, I will give you tips. So now you can see what cases you are supposed to use. And now let's check. Номер один. Моя сестра очень хочет стать матерью. Номер два. Наша лень нас погубит. Номер три. Она подарила дочери свое обручальное кольцо. Номер четыре. Каждый сам выбирает свой путь. Номер пять. Она стояла рядом с дверью, но не решалась войти. Номер шесть. Но на столе нет никакой тетради. Номер семь. Они говорили об этом имени очень долго. Номер восемь. Тем временем он старался вспомнить, что произошло. Номер девять. Они договорились встретиться у площади. Номер десять. Заходи и закрой за собой дверь. I hope that you have done everything correctly again. See you next time. Anyway, find the sign with A in glasses and you can subscribe to me by pressing this button. So, so hope to see you soon. Sorry to bother. Well, ah, pfft. this is crazy. Take a look at my new flower. Do you like it? I do.